Hey, this is Devin and Aaron from Cavity Colors, and you're listening to Drop the Mic. Well, what have we here? You a good cop? Hot shot? <laughs> sure you are. Boy, you gotta be some kind of great cop. Come in here all by yourself. don't think I'm a very nice guy, <laughs> do you? Buddy, I think you're slowing. <laughs> <laughs> See, I got this problem. Cops don't like me, so I don't like cops. Welcome back to our humble podcast. This is Drop the Mic, and I am your host, Wesley the Swan Swanson. Alongside me today, we have our local projectionist, Mr. Chris Pollock, returning for our, our uh, once a month special movie review. How are you, man? I'm doing pretty good, man. How are you? Good, good, good. Uh, round two, right, tonight? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. We uh, tried to tried to do the show earlier, and too much too much noise too many distractions we stopped and started a couple times and it's just you keep losing the momentum yes you know and it's it's kind of hard to pick up in the when you're in the middle of a thought or an explanation so just quit then regroup later this evening and i think it's going to work out much better this time yeah uh, thank you so much for, uh, you know, being flexible with, um, recording schedules. I appreciate that. I am on furlough, so I am completely flexible with whatever you need for the time being. It works out. It all works out. <laughs> so this is episode 213, Murphy's Law. I'd buy this episode for a dollar. <laughs> 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 With that being said, this week we journey back to the late 80s for a discussion on the original RoboCop film. But before we go uh, cyberpunk, let's take a few minutes to warm up with our uh, usual beginning segments, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. And now for a special news report. Brought to you by Drop the Mic. All right, Chris, what do you have for me as far as pop culture news this week? Uh, the only thing I really have is because uh, I believe it broke after you guys did your episode last week, and that is that Comic-Con announced that they, they had previously said that they weren't going to hold Comic-Con in July again this year due to the pandemic, but they think that things will be okay again enough to hold a kind of a mini Comic-Con in uh, November on Thanksgiving weekend. Okay. I don't know exactly how that's going to play out because that's, I mean, a holiday weekend for starters. Second of all, hopefully we'll be in a much better spot. You know, we're doing really well on getting uh, citizens vaccinated. So it might be the first holiday season that, you know, a lot of people get to spend with their families in almost two years. And I'm, I'm wondering how many people would rather go to Comic-Con than spend time with their family that, you know, they probably haven't seen in, in quite a while, or at least, you know, face-to-face in quite a while. Perhaps there's a secret uh, agenda going on <laughs> behind the scenes where they're hoping that people, less people will be attracted to go, and that's why they chose that slate, perhaps. Perhaps. I mean, uh, you and I are our uh, hometown is San Diego. So, you know, you and I have attended multiple times over the years, but I wouldn't want to go. I'm still I'm still very leery. I mean, even if they held it in July, I still wouldn't be going this year. Yeah. You know, hope with a little luck, hopefully next year. But even in November, I'd probably still be a little uh, I think I'll pass. But it's it's very curious why why they didn't choose you know like the weekend before or you know the the weekend around Veterans Day or something why Thanksgiving weekend? Yeah, 
it's definitely uh, definitely questionable. Um, I wonder what their real logic behind choosing that date was. Yeah, it's strange. I'm trying to think about uh, what I said earlier. Oh, uh, one of my buddies, somebody I know, somebody inside the convention center, and he was saying that they they they're not sure if it, the in person part of it is going to happen at all yet, and that's still uh-huh. they're, they're still on the fence about that. But that they want to do some kind of mix of like the the virtual side and the in person side. Uh-huh. I'm assuming maybe for the people who can't make it because of the obvious, um, you know. Uh, capacity restraints maybe do a virtual thing for people you know that can kind of check out um things from home as well i mean that would make sense uh to me yeah and there at that point in time there might still be some uh some travel restrictions Mm -hmm. in place so the virtual still makes sense i'm kind of wondering how big it's going to be i mean i don't think it's going to be as big as it is normally when it happens in the summer you know, as as far as not only uh, attendance, but you know the the major studios and the major companies that always show up at Comic Con. I don't I don't foresee this being as big. No, there's no there's no way. <laughs> but still, still curious as as to what's going to happen and how big. So. We'll have to see, but as you as you said, it doesn't sound like it's a hundred percent set in stone right now. No, because the you know uh, convention center is being used um, for other purposes. So it's like, well, is this you know is all that stuff really going to be settled by then? Mm-hmm. Um, or maybe are they just going to have to uh, you know? just hunker down and make create make comic-con us you know have a smaller space it's kind of strange uh when you look at it from that perspective i guess but um hopefully it works out for them i guess yeah i hope so i just i'd much rather see them just you know go go super big next july yeah but curious curious to see what happens in november i think um once we get comic-con back in full swing everybody's going to you know appreciate it that much more you know i mean like with along with everything movie theaters shows like uh we're going to have a newfound appreciation for these things that we probably took for granted before this pandemic so yeah and i i 100 agree you know it's it's uh, for lack of a better word just kind of sucks being able to to miss out on a lot of this stuff you know uh because of all this yep so i'm, I'm really looking forward to doing stuff like you know the comic-con or you know the the del mar fair and even even smaller stuff just like going to the park and and not having to worry or uh shit i mean i miss going to record swap oh yeah I haven't been to record swap in a long time and that was something I used to like to go and do and you know that that hasn't happened in, in over a year already. We're getting uh we're getting back there slowly but surely though. Well as long as uh everyone is keeping it safe and we're doing things the smart way and you know, a lot of uh festivals and, and big events are are waiting until it's gonna be safe. I think was it Bonnaroo? Mm-hmm is planning on september right now i know that's a lot of outside stuff but i think they're the first mate are they the first major festival that's going to happen this year you mean in all of the united states or just uh in our area uh in in the united states i think punk rock bowling uh were the were the first to release um their their lineup which was yeah and it's also for september that that's, uh, takes place in in vegas which is i think they've been more relaxed with their with their regulations which is questionable so wow. sorry for anybody out there listening <laughs> that's in vegas but um but yeah i think they were the first to to release a real lineup yeah well hopefully hopefully people are safe you know, like I said, don't don't go rushing into something just because you want to. I would probably wait 
a little bit longer and make sure that uh, things are a lot safer and more people have been vaccinated by that point. Yeah. And that was uh, that was the only thing, right, for you? That's the only thing I got for you. Awesome. All right, I have uh, two two pieces. My first one is Netflix has worked out a deal uh, with Knives Out director Ryan Johnson. That deal is an incredible four hundred and fifty million uh, dollars uh, for the rights to the upcoming Knives Out sequels two and three. And this is uh, including, I believe, uh, Daniel Craig is included in there. That's awesome because he he was fantastic in Knives Out. I know that you and I uh, both spoke highly of that movie um, on our Best of 2019 show. And he's, he's so much fun in the movie, so I'm excited to see him back. And good, good for, for Ryan Johnson for getting a huge payday out of Netflix. Yeah, if they're willing, I mean, why why not, you know? Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully you'll get a chance to see it in the theater, though. I, uh, like we discussed off, I guess, off air technically now, um, I, I do see them, you know, having at least a limited theat- theatrical run for those. Yeah, that's, if you want to qualify for the awards, at least in normal times, that's what you need is you need some kind of an, uh, a theatrical run. Yes. You know, like a, a two week minimum or something. Uh, you know, that's, that's how you and I saw the Irishman. Yep. Uh, last year, 18 months ago. So I believe that, you know, the pandemic year was the exception because nothing was open movie theater wise. So everything had to be streaming. But I think, uh, for, the 2021 uh, movies, I think that they're going to have to have some kind of a, a qualifying run because a lot of movie theaters are going to be opening probably by probably by the summer. Uh, well, that's cool, man. That's cool. John Wick director Chad Stileski uh, is working on a film adaptation of, of the PS4 sleeper hit Ghost of Tsushima. And I don't believe you had heard of this before I, I brought it up. No. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a huge um, open world kind of sandbox uh, video game set in feudal Japan. Uh, incredibly cinematic, fun, um, completely authentic, uh, and I was super stoked that to see um, you know Chad being involved in this. I don't think he's set to direct as of yet i think he's more of a producer and he's kind of getting the ball rolling i know they're working with the the same game studio so we know it's going to be uh, hopefully faithful and i really do hope that they are able to kind of kill uh the that you know this dreadful curse of uh, video game adaptations in film because most of them aren't any good yeah i, I totally agree with that and um, i'd be super excited to see uh uh, kind of Kurosawa esque samurai movie because I'm a, I'm a huge fan of those, so I'm I'm gonna be excited to to see something like that. Yes, yes, I can't wait. Um, even though this is kind of off topic, are you interested? Have you seen the the the, the red band trailer for the new Mortal Kombat? Yeah. What um, yeah, I've seen. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, you know. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe if it's on HBO one day, I'll check it out because I still have yet to hook up HBO Max. Okay, but you know when it when it hits HBO, maybe I check it out. It's it's not something that I'm like super stoked on. Okay, I'm, I'm not a fan of of the '90s version of Mortal Kombat. Of course, yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's uh, at least they're kind of going for the the violence and the gore. Yeah, and this a, time around, like a more grounded, serious take. Yeah, or as as grounded as you can be with something like that. But um, I'm I remember, and this was all, all also off air. But right before we did the Street Fighter bad episode, which was so much fun, you were like, "Yeah, Street Fighter is a dog shit movie, but even the '90s Mortal Kombat movie is a better movie than Street Fighter." And 